Hello, everyone. I want to welcome you again to Model 3 of the course Gender Mainstreaming and Artisanal Small Scale Mining. And at this model, we'll be looking at policies and practice to foster gender equality in mining. In our previous model, we looked at the peculiar challenges of ASM on women and women's specific needs. Model two looked at the gender impact assessment, where you'll be able to ascertain the specific challenges and the differentiated needs of both men and women so far as artisanal small-scale mining is concerned. And at this model, we'll be looking at policies and practice that will foster gender equality in mining operations and specifically ASM. So first of all, we will look at um, gender in the mining policy framework in West Africa, that's the ECOWAS sub region. Natural resources have received a lot of traction as a catalyst for Africa's industrialization agenda. And this is deeply recognized in the Africa Union's Agenda 2063, as well as the Africa Mining Vision. So its impact on the people, especially women, has equally received this recognition. This has formed part of topical issues and as such prominent policy frameworks, such as the Africa Mining Vision, and that's the broader continental uh, mining vision. Now, when you come back to the sub-region, it has equally received um, attention. We have the ECOWAS policy frameworks, and globally, we have the extractive industry transparency initiative, also giving it attention in the 2019 um, standard. Equally at the local level, drilling down from the broader global, regional and sub-regional, the issue of gender has been integrated in national policies and has been reflected in country specific laws. The following slides will look at how these policies at the various levels, be it international, regional, sub-regional, and the local level are integrating gender to promote gender equality through resource governance. So first of all, we will look at the continental um, framework, which is the Africa mining vision. The AMV, as we call it, is the overarching resource governance framework for the African continent with the Africa Minerals Development Center as the implementing unit of the African Union. The main objective is to promote broad-based equitable and sustainable development through the responsible use of the continent's natural resources. To achieve this, the AMV deeply recognizes the existing gender disparity challenges and acknowledges women as marginalized groups. This is expected to deteriorate as mining operations disrupt social structures, as was discussed in model one, and do not make job provisions for women, but rather reduce their time for productive use due to rise in unpaid care work. If you recall in under model one, the, the advent of mining activities increases unpaid care work through increased incidence of health issues um, because um, from social, our societal framework, the social responsibility of the woman includes taking care of the sick. And usually, with the advent of mining activities, the incidence of health issues go up due to the various forms of contaminants, water pollution, 
and all that. And even having to travel far to fetch water, to fetch firewood, to provide for the family, also care for the aged and other vulnerable uh, groups. This increases the women, the amount of time that women commit to unpaid care work with barely any left to commit to productive use and be paid. Therefore, to support countries to ensure that mining activities yield equitable outcomes and the conditions of both men and women improve, the AMV promotes mainstreaming gender in countries' policy, mining policies and other legislative and regulatory instruments. So this is to ensure that extractive activities are inclusive and uphold women rights without leaving anybody behind. Unfortunately, there is a downside to the AMV. Despite acknowledging women peculiar needs and making provision or encouraging member states to integrate gender mechanisms in their respective regulatory and legal framework. The downside of the AMV to achieving this is that the action plan of the AMV, which is supposed to guide the implementation of the AMV, do not contain detailed policy measures or strategic actions to empower women's, to empower women's participation or deepen um, their participation in extractives and promote gender equality. Again, since coming into effect in 2009, that's over a decade of its existence, member states are here to fully develop their country mining vision, to localize the AMV and integrate these gender perspectives in their local laws. Despite this shortfall in the implementation of country mining vision, it's worth mentioning that most countries have undertaken steps to introduce gender perspectives in their local laws. Although not into details or no regulation exists to guide its implementation or even make it legally binding, for stakeholding institutions and mining companies alike. You may cite Ghana as an example, because Ghana has um, cite, um, a number of um, legal framework, very robust re uh, legal framework, and has enshrined some gender perspective in their laws. However, there is no gender specific law that binds mining companies or that bind even uh, public institutions to ensure that women participation is well entrenched in the day-to-day -day administration or in the operation of mining activities or by mining companies to ensure that um, the participation of women is increased in the extractive sector. Moving away from the Africa mining vision, we now come to the sub-regional level. As I mentioned earlier, at the ECOWAS level, we have a number of um, um, legal and policy framework that deeply acknowledges the differentiated impact of mining activities on men and women and have made those legal provisions to ensure gender mainstreaming. So like any other UN member states, member states of the ECOWAS have signed on to multiple international human rights declarations and protocols. And some of these protocols are gender equality centered. Famous among them is the 1995 Beijing Declaration, and of most recent is the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, specifically Goal 5. 
And these human rights and gender equality have been imbibed into the ECOWAS sub-regional treaties. The ECOWAS treaty, specifically um, Article 63 of the 1993 revised treaty, which seeks to enhance the socioeconomic and cultural conditions of women. This was followed by a number of separate policies specifically aimed at promoting women's rights and gender equality. So although the treaty is not specific to the extractive sector, it brings into attention the need for gender equality across all sectors. And in this case, includes the extractive sector. So now, now let's look at specific um, uh, specific um, legal framework uh, within the ECOWAS region. So one, we have the ECOWAS program on gender mainstreaming in energy access, ECOGEN. So the ECOGEN is a flagship program by ECRI, that's the ECOWAS Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency to meet the sustainable energy for all goals in West Africa. It is the first regional policy instrument seeking to close gender, um, the gender gap within the energy sector. The program deeply recognizes the differentiated energy needs of both men and women. Likewise, it acknowledges the impact of energy access on or um, its lack on both men and women and the fact that this could also be different because both men and women have different needs. Therefore, the program encourages and supports member states to factor these um, gender differentiated needs in their planning and formulation, as well as implementation of national and regional policies and programs to achieve its objective of increased access to modern, affordable, and reliable clean energy services, energy security, and environmental sustainability. It provides action plans and timelines to guide and bind states to commit to its implementation that's, this is something uh, um, the, the, the gap in the AMV and the ECOWAS um, program on gender mainstreaming in energy access seem to close that gap by providing a framework that guides its implementation in terms of um, gender mainstreaming. So um, this is the flagship program. So following um, the advent of ECOGEN, was uh, the ECOWAS policy for gender mainstreaming um, in energy um, um, access. So following that, we have the ECOWAS Directive on Gender Assessment in Energy Projects. That's uh, to ensure the effective implementation of the ECOWAS policy for gender mainstreaming and its objective for social inclusion Following the development of the ECOWAS policy for gender mainstreaming in energy access, ECOGEN, ECRI came up with the ECOWAS Directive on Gender Assessment in Energy Projects. This is to ensure the effective implementation of the ECOWAS policy for gender mainstreaming and this objective of social inclusion and gender equality in energy development and access. This essentially provides the legal framework to countries to guide the implementation of the policy in gender mainstreaming among member countries at the national level. To achieve this, ECRA is working together with the local implementing agencies, mainly providing technical support and capacity development. 
So the next um, legal firm we want to look at is the MDAT. That is the ECOWAS Model Mining and Minerals Development Act. The MDAT provides a framework for the harmonization of mining policies in the sub-region to ensure that countries with mineral resources make optimal benefit and not lose out due to unhealthy competition among member states for investment attraction. The MDA is to serve as a blueprint for mineral resource development in the ECOWAS region. That is, the MDA is aimed at deriving optimal intergenerational benefits from Africa's mineral resources. Of utmost importance to us and for this course and that this model is its emphasis on gender in the mining sector to ensure that gender equality in the mining sector, specifically the act promotes this in a number of areas. That's in the area of employment and in the area of access to funding. The act also promotes this through women empowerment, uh, mainly through community development agreements and any other mining policies aimed at upholding the rights of um, um, community members or the right of um, mining impacted communities. Thus, member states are encouraged to ensure that so far as there is any law or any strategic policy that is looking at um, upholding women, uh, the rights of communities, they should ensure that women's rights are equally upheld and that that policy, the outcome of that policy will empower women and enhance their participation in the extractive industry. So away from the sub-region, um, let's look at, at the global um, level. That's gender in the extractive industry and transparency initiative. The EITI is the global standard for good resource governance, as you all know. It promotes open and accountable governance of oil, gas, and mineral resources. The main aim is opening up the extractive sector by making publicly available as much information as possible about the resource sector to inform stakeholders and other non-state accountability actors many civil societies, um, government and businesses, and um, also the public to engage in critical debates and strengthen accountability mechanism in the extractive sector. The objective here is not to have an enclave resource sector, but the extractive sector is opened up, the public is informed of the operations that go on within the extractive sector and are able to hold uh, the various players accountable for the activities that go on within the sector. With the increased um, global agency on gender equality, the 2019 EITI standard makes provision for gender. Thus, currently, the EITI standard requires gender diversity in the multi-stakeholder groups, in countries' multi-stakeholder groups. Um, it's not to have equal representation as in numerical, but to ensure fair and adequate um, representation of both men and women in the multi-stakeholder group. Again, to ensure countries mainstream gender in the extractive sector, requirement 6.3 of the 2019 EITI standard 
requires countries to provide gender disaggregated data when reporting on um, requirement six, which seeks to um, highlight the socioeconomic contributions of extractive to, um, the, um, to the economy. So we have um, requirement 1.4, that's women's participation in the multi-stakeholder group. And we also have um, requirement 6.3, which seeks for gender disaggregated data um, in employment. Um, that is to be able to ascertain the specific socioeconomic impact of extractive, and in this case, to know the gender component of the socioeconomic um, contribution of extractive industry. All right, so moving away from the global level, we now move to the, um, at the, at the country level, what is going on in terms of policy and what is going on in terms of practice. So following from the above um, discussion, countries within the sub-region, uh, I mean the ECOWAS sub-region, have made multiple commitments to diverse treaties, protocols, declarations, and strategies, what have you, uh, that promotes human rights and also at the core of its uh, gender equality. And in most countries, parts of these have been reflected in their respective local policies, either as a generalized policy, such as a national agenda policy, or in extractive uh, specific policies, um, thus introducing gender perspectives in some aspects of the existing legal framework, especially employment and um, procurement. And um, what is lacking mainly in these countries is perhaps a sector-specific gender policy tailored to promote gender equality in the mining sector. So what we have is that in most countries, you will have um, maybe a national gender policy that cuts across all economic sectors. And usually th th there's an implementation problem um, with that because it's more generalized and sometimes it's not um, binding. That's um, stakeholders are encouraged to do so, but there's no legal um, legally binding element that that hold them to account as to whether or not they do it and if there's even any sanctions for, um, um, for them. Uh, what uh, I believe is um, um, imperative is our ability to have gender specific policies or uh, within the extractive sector, tailored made for the extractive sector and binding on all stakeholders or stakeholder institutions within the extractive sector to internalize them within their own internal um, policies. Uh, in their own organizational internal policies so that to become part and parcel of them it to be institutionalized and i believe it's from there that we'll begin to have more and more uh, women participation in the extractive um, 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 activities uh, especially in the area of um, employment and, 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 and procurement along the value chain so, um, in conclusion, the issue of gender equality is undoubtedly at the fore of natural resource governance at the global, regional, and um, national level. However, in spite of the multiple policy uh, strategies and protocols and uh, mainstream um, programs that we have right from the, pro, uh, the global level to the regional level and even at the local level. Mainstreaming um, 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 challenges still persist and in most cases it stems from implementation challenges. 
So we have the laws. It, it, um, it's easy for countries to um, um, imbibe or embed uh, specific tenets of the various regional policies in their local policies. But the problem has always been implementation. It is therefore critical for advocates to intensify their advocacy and ensure equitable socioeconomic outcomes that uphold gender, that ensures that mining activities do not um, um, worsen the already existing gender gaps, but rather uphold women rights, empower women and deepen their participation so that at the end of the day, mining activities will uh, improve the living conditions of both men and women um, equally without leaving anybody behind. We want to end model three here um, with this um, insight. And as always, I will encourage you to share your questions in the um, in the in the forum on the platform. And I'll also encourage you to share your country experiences with us and any other comments or additions you would want to share with us, um, you are welcome to do so. So that brings us to the end of Model 3. Thank you very much for your time, and I wish you the very best.